Hello, good afternoon, and welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm super excited today. I'm Adrian Mayfield, just in case you landed here by accident and have no idea who I am. I am going to be interviewing a guest today. You know, I love to interview guests more than talking to myself. So I'm going to bring her on in just a couple of minutes. We'll give about 60 seconds for people to realize that we're on. If you would, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and share the broadcast. If you're watching from Facebook or from Twitter, please share the broadcast. We're going to be in for a treat today. We'll be talking to Elder Ivy Caldwell today, and she's going to be sharing about her book, Expose It. So buckle your seatbelts as we get ready for that. Again, I am your host, Adrian Mayfield. My website is scrolling down at the bottom. Take a screenshot. I have lots of resources available for you. I have four books there. They have, I have trauma coaching where I help people coach, I coach people through their trauma so that they can live out their purpose and destiny. I also have a podcast, which is Beauty for Ashes. And that is a number that you can use to text me. Come straight to my phone, 770-746-8453. So if you are interested in being a guest on my podcast, or just want to come on and chat about something that is of interest to you, please reach out to me and let me know. So we're about a minute into the broadcast now. We're going to go ahead and bring in Elder Caldwell because we don't want to waste any time. We want to jump right in. We promise to keep this under an hour for you guys unless it gets really exciting, really juicy, and it goes longer. But otherwise, we'll keep it around 45 minutes to an hour. Please send your comments, your questions in. We'll, we'll take a break probably around 15, 20 minutes or so, and I'll see if you have any questions, anything that she's discussed that you're interested in knowing more about. So please engage. This is social media. Get social. Invite all your friends to hop on, listen in as you're driving from work. And again, if you have any comments, use your Siri to put those comments in if that's possible, and let's get the conversation started. So I'm going, going to go ahead and remove my information because it kind of irritates me when it goes across the screen. So I'm going to take that down. Hopefully you had time to get a screenshot of that, remove both of those, and we should be able to bring in Elder Caldwell now. So let's bring her in. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. How are you? Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you, to get to talk to you and get to know you. This is actually our first time seeing each other live, so it's exciting to be able to share it with the guests and let them get to know who you are. So you're an author. I see that you are a 15-time author. That's amazing. Lots of people probably don't even write one book, much less 15. So tell us a little bit about your journey as an author. And you can also, as you're telling us about that, tell us about your books. Amen. Amen. My journey um, as an author, uh, I guess it began maybe in 1994. I had written some children's stories in a notebook and I had put it down. OK, so unpublished author at that time. Life goes on. You know, I'll get back to it. So in 2020, when the pandemic began shutting things down, you know, I said, hey, I'm working from home. I got free time on my hand. We can't go anywhere. Can't do anything. Let me pick this notebook back up and start writing my children's stories. So within a few months, I, I added a more to the collection. So I'm about 30 stories in for children books yet to be published. Uh, I'm so excited about that. I can't wait to get started on that. But while in prayer one morning, the Holy Spirit said, you can't skip over this. So I'm like, skip over what, Lord? Your story. So I'm like, my story? What is my story? You know, I had to sit there and think about it. So I'm like, my story, tell my story. So the Holy Spirit says, your story will authenticate the children book series yet to come forth. So I'm like, wow, you know, my story. So I said, okay, Lord, yes, I will tell my story. I had no intentions of telling my story, but under the direction of the Holy Spirit and being obedient, God said, tell your story first. 
So in uh, 2021, uh, my book was published and it's entitled Expose It. Let your healing process begin. What is in this book is my personal story, my personal testimony, my memoir of uh, talking about the sexual abuse that I endured as a young child. You know, I had no intentions of telling anyone that. I just wanted to be a voice for children. But I did it, it is here, and this book has already blessed so many lives. And I will share an insert out of my book. I'm praying that there will not be any triggers for anyone on today that are listening in, tuning in. But my first experience with sexual abuse started on my ninth birthday. You know, I woke up early that day excited, you know, what, what type of gifts would I get? Who would come over and visit visit me? You know, what type of gifts would I get? Would I have a kid? I felt like the happiest little girl in the world. Then I got a phone call. And on the other end of the phone call, I heard a caller say, I have a surprise for you today. And I need you to come by and get it. My mind began to anticipate and wonder what it could be. Later that day, as I headed to my mother's boyfriend's house, I remember skipping down the street with some joy in my heart. I had to go up the stairs to get into his house because he lived on the upper level and I was alone. As I walked in there, I can remember there was an aroma of these seasonings he used to mix together whenever he cooked. He told me to sit on. Hold the on, one second, Ivy. They they said that you're echoing, so I'm gonna mute my. All right. So you want me to continue? You're going to have to put something in the chat if you're speaking to me directly because I see your lips moving, but I can't hear anything because you're on mute. <laughs> I'm trying to see if someone can let us know in the chat whether or not we are still echoing because I can put my headset in and take my microphone out if that's the case. Can someone let us know if we're still echoing? Yeah. Okay. They said that fixed it. Okay. Okay. So later that day, as I headed to my mother's boyfriend house, I remember skipping down the street with such joy in my heart. I had to go up the stairs to get into his house because he lived on the upper level and I was alone. As I walked in there, I remember there was an aroma of these seasonings he used to mix together whenever he cooked. He told me to sit on the couch and I remember he was watching a football game. After a few minutes while I was seated, he began to unbutton my navy blue shirt with clear buttons. I remember moving his hand and telling him to stop, but he didn't. He had ulterior motives on that day, and no matter what I had done or said as that nine-year-old girl, his intentions were to go full forward with what he had planned to do. So on my ninth birthday, I was uh, molested and when he had finished, he uh, put me back in the living room on the couch, sat there for a few minutes. And then he gave me a dollar bill and a, a tin box of crackers and sent me on my way. You know, my life was forever changed on that day. And I didn't speak of the incident at all. You know, I went home didn't speak about it. But you know, I can remember being a happy, gleeful, outgoing little girl. But when that happened, everything changed. I became withdrawn. I became that introvert. As time went on, you know, I hadn't seen him for a few months and our home had caught on fire. So we had to move to the other side of town and who shows up at our house one day? This guy does. 
So now I have fear. He is now living with us. I have fear in my heart because he would taunt me. Going through the house, pointing his fingers at me saying, I'm going to get you. He never did get me, but that fear factor was there. I had the, you know, this anger, this unforgiveness as this little girl. I hated this man. And one day, you know, my mom asked me, well, why don't you like him? Because she knew I didn't like him and he knew. So I'm thinking, okay, now I'm a little older. I'm thinking, you know, this is my out. So I tell my mom exactly what happens to me. And she says, girl, ain't nothing happened to you. Must have been something you saw on TV. So that day forever shut my voice. There was a lot of things going on um, in the household that should not go on in the home. But the truth of the matter is it goes on every day in our homes and children don't know what to do. So whenever I have the opportunity to share my story, you know, I encourage parents and guardians you know, talk to your children about those safe places, safe zones on their bodies, you know, where people shouldn't touch. If anyone makes you feel uncomfortable, you know, let me know. You know, let them know I will not get mad at you no matter who it is, especially if it's a relative, because the majority of the time, uh, the offender is someone living right in the home with the child. Let your child, your children know it's okay to speak up. But then we have so many adults and children right now, male and female, who have yet to expose their truth. So that is what uh, my book is about, exposing your truth. Why? So that you can begin your healing process, get your authority and your power back. That is what my story is about. I also have a, a chapter in there about forgiveness. You know, people will say, you know, I'm not forgiving anyone. You know, they should have done this to me. All right. So it happened. We can't change it. But forgiveness is a part of your healing journey. Forgiveness is for you. It's not for the offender. It's not an out. It doesn't mean that it ha didn't happen. They may never say, I'm sorry. They may never acknowledge it. They may call you a liar. But forgiveness is you releasing them and yourself. Now, why do I say yourself? Because whenever you think about the incident, although you try to put it out of your mind, it's not going to go anywhere until you voice it. It's on the inside doing internal damage but we have to expose it. When you go around the person, you run the other way. You may sweat, you may get irritated. They have power over you. We get our power back and our voice back when we voice what has happened to us and let them know. You may not have the opportunity to see them. Maybe they passed away, all right? You can write it out. You can journal it. Write a letter to them. You know, let them know exactly how you feel or felt about the situation. Better yet, you can tell God all about it. He can handle it. God can handle it. And I have created a course. It's an online course. You can do online or you can do virtual and work with me. I am a transformation life coach, and I would love the opportunity to uh, assist others to expose their truth. I mean, you do this in the privacy of your own home. I take you through uh, five steps with different strategies to help you to open up and expose your truth. Yes, it's going to hurt. It's not going to feel good. But will you dare to feel that pain one more good time in order to heal? Because healing is available. 
Freedom is available to you. And I am a witness. It is possible not to feel the pains of the past and walk in freedom and wholeness. And I thank God for his wonder working power working in my lives. I thank God for my testimony. I thank God for what I have been through. Why? Because I can help someone else along the way. That's what it's all about. Giving back. So, so this, I had no idea that this was, that that was what the book was about. I mean, I knew it was about exposing past hurts and pains, but not that God had actually called, caused you to expose something that happened to you in your childhood. So, this is a conversation that needs to be had because I'm hearing more and more from people that I talk to about molestation and rape and things that happen during childhood that never gets exposed. I even saw on a, um, I'm a, on a pretty popular pastor's Facebook page the other day, I think he was molested when he was a little boy and he talked about, you know, it's all, it's fine and good for people to, to pray and forgive and we have to forgive and we have to pray but that people who violate children, people who violate and take advantage of and abuse people should go to jail. And mm -hmm. so he said, you know, that can't happen unless you expose it. That can't happen unless you talk about it. That can't yeah. happen unless we have these conversations because a lot of times it's generational. Yes. You know, the grandfather molested every granddaughter in the entire bloodline. Nobody talks about it. Nobody discusses it. And this violation this molestation just keeps per perpetuating itself. So was that a convert? I mean, are you aware of like, I mean, so I guess since your mom said it never happened, nothing, that he was never criminally charged or anything like that. Is that right? That's correct. He was not. You are absolutely right. It's definitely generational. I have incest in my bloodline. It's in my family. Um, and it definitely needs to be addressed. We are living in a different time. And it has passed down from generation to generation. You know, what, what goes on in this house stays in the house. Yeah. The devil is a liar. You are hiding a child molester, a criminal in your home. Or you have on blinders like it's okay and nothing is wrong. Or the adult will say, you're okay, you know, just fix yourself up. No, right. that's wrong to violate a child like that. Mm -hmm. Their body is not ready for it. Their mind is not ready for it. They don't have the vocabulary to articulate what has mm -hmm. happened to them. They've just been shocked in all right. areas of their lives with that violation. And that is right. so true. There's just so many that they hide it. They hide it. Fear, fear of family members, fear of what others are going to say. No, expose it so your healing process can begin. Stop yeah. hiding. Come out of a darkness. Come out of silent agreement with darkness. Yes. Bring it to the light. Expose yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exposure has to be, I mean, we have to shine light in darkness in order for that darkness to begin to dissipate and be pushed back. And it's a difficult conversation to have at times. You know, people feel blame. They feel shame. They feel guilt. But it's definitely a necessary conversation. And if we don't have the conversation, then like we just both said, it, this just continues to perpetuate it. So I'm really excited about your book. Have you like, so how, when did you publish the book again? It was in May of 2021. Okay. May of 2021. So are you doing, are you in schools or are you, do you have you been doing like a tour going to organizations talking about this or churches? Uh, I've been working with a few churches right now. I've been trying to get into the schools, but that's kind of difficult. It's like, I know I can't bring Jesus into the school, but I definitely can talk about this subject. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, when um, you go into the school, you take Jesus in the school, so they can't stop that if they let right. you in there. He's in me. Okay. <laughs> so I have, a, so we talked about that book. You've, you've written several other books. Do you want to talk about any of those books or you just kind of want to stay with Expose It? Uh, we can talk about expose it a little bit more and then we can venture off into the other books. Um, there's another um, section in here because, you know, as a mother, you know, I have four sons and I didn't let my sons go over any of my family members home or any classmates, you know, because I know the enemy is out there lurking, you know, just waiting for an opportunity to um, get at our children. 
But I can remember um, as a little girl that this teenager female pulled me onto the side of the house and she put her hand in my underwear. Hmm. After that incident, I kept my butt in the house. <laughs> I'm like, you know, as a little girl, you know, people are just crazy. And the spirit of homosexuality is just rampant in the land. America's becoming a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. It is. But I have some questions in my book. I just need the listeners to just think about these questions. Okay. I was browsing social media one day and I saw this comment. It means to think about a statement. So I'm just going to drop this right here for you to think about it. Now, I love everyone. And if this is your lifestyle, that's your lifestyle. That's your choice. We all have a choice to make. And I am not bashing anyone. I just want you to go back and think as I ask these questions. Why did you choose the lifestyle you are living? Was it really your choice? What happened to you when you were a child or in life that might have influenced your decision? Do you think it was your fault? Were you tricked into it? Were you violated in some way? Are you protecting someone? Mm. Did you witness abuse from the opposite sex? Because I know of a young lady right now where her mom was physically abused. And as a child, that turned her off from men. So today, if you look at her, you would think she's a man. Mm -hmm. She has a full beard. Mm-hmm. Were you exploring and enjoyed it? Did you have to sacrifice your body to get money, position, or status wow. for your basic needs, perhaps? Did you feel uncomfortable being who God created you to be? Why are you uncomfortable being who God created you to be? Were you forced into this lifestyle? Are you truly happy with your decision? Have you dealt with your past trauma of the person mm -hmm. that violated you? That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. I, those are those are really powerful questions, very introspective questions. And I tell people all the time, self-talk is so important. You got to ask yourself. It's not just what you're doing, but you need to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why do I feel the way feel this way? Why am I living like this? Why am I making these choices? So those are really, really good questions, because I think at the root of I mean, at the root of most sin issues is identity. It goes back to identity, it goes back yeah. to the Garden of Eden, saying, saying, who did God, did God really say this? Did yeah, God really yeah, tell yeah, you that? Yeah. And bringing in this whole question of, are you really who God says you are? Is he really who he says he is? And once you begin to entertain those questions, then anything is possible because now the door is open for the enemy to try to tell you who he says you are. So I think those, I mean, that's those are really powerful questions for people yeah. to begin to explore and look into you know, why have, why am I making the choices I'm making? Is this really who I am? Yeah. And I tell a lot of times, especially as adults, we think our personality is our real personality. Yeah. But, but most often than not, our personality is shaped by trauma. Yeah. So some of the things that you see somebody who's really mean or really tough or really introspective or really outgoing or really loud. If you trace that back, there's some trauma that's usually unresolved that's making them show up. And that's not even their real personality. That's Amen. a personality that's come out of survival, come out of pain, come out of trauma. Amen. So those, Amen. I mean, that's really, really powerful. So yeah. why do you think it's so hard for people to talk about their trauma? You got to go back. You got to go back to the root of when it first began. Fear. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Fear. And the only person that wants us to fear is the enemy. God loves us. 
God knew what happened to you. He knows all about it. He knows how you feel. He knows what you're in, in, in the middle of right now. But fear will stop you from speaking up. Yeah. And that shame, you know, what are they going to say about me? Shame, guilt, and condemnation. All of that comes from the enemy. And I have some great news for you on today. Jesus carried all that on the cross. Amen. You do not have to bear it. It's too heavy for us to bear. Mm -hmm. And if you think about Jesus being on the cross, that was an ugly, gruesome sight to have all the sin of the world on his body. Mm -hmm. He carried it already. You don't yeah. have to. He carried all the shame, the guilt. They killed him on the cross, sacrificed him on the cross. He carried it. Give it to God. I'm telling you, go to God first. Just talk to him. Have a talk with God. He can handle it. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's it. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, we're about halfway through the broadcast. If you have any questions for Ivy, put those in the comment section so I can give those to her so she can address any questions that you have. Let's see. Um, they say the channel is good. Um, thank you for watching. That's me saying that. And I want to encourage you now, if you know someone, a friend, a family member who's been impacted by trauma, who's been impacted by abuse, share this broadcast now. Go ahead and shoot them a con shoot them, a hit that share button and let them know that we're live and we're talking about something that they need to talk about, something that they need to finally close the door to the enemy and heal. The book is called Expose It, and it is encouraging people to begin to have these necessary conversations that help people walk out of trauma and into their purpose. You don't need to be in bondage. You don't need to be held back by things from your past. You are not a victim. You are a victor. It's time to expose it so we can begin to shed light on these situations and move them forward. Okay, I don't see any questions right now. Hopefully some people will put in some questions. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the bestseller status because we're talking about something that's kind of heavy and we'll circle back around to that if some people have some questions. But you said that you have made bestseller status six times. And I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, six times bestseller, that's huge. So how, what's that process like? Was it hard to achieve? And has it helped you as an author having that status? Uh, the bestseller status came about from collaborations. All right. We can do more together, yes. you know, if you're not by yourself. So the, yes. the bestseller status came, definitely came from collaborations. It wasn't difficult at all because we all work together as a team. And then, and that first collaboration was entitled walking in my purpose, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. We'll talk about purpose. What is my purpose? Why am I here? But because of all of the trauma that I have been through, I am now walking in my purpose. Right. We, you know, people say, you know, your pain isn't for you. All right. I don't want to hear that. But heal, baby, heal, because all of that pain you have been through is for someone else. Yes. And when I'm talking about my book or my story and helping other women and girls and empowering them, I'm just full with the passion and desire. I just want you to know you don't have to stay that way. And walking in my purpose is uh, we have uh, seven women in the book, different backgrounds, different experiences, but it's all painful, trauma, things that we have gone through in our lives. And because of that, this book, we now have businesses where we're helping other people right. to be healed and empower them as well so that they in turn can do the same thing, mm -hmm. heal and walk in their purpose. Um, Called to Intercede, that's a book about praying. Uh, intercession is not for the weak. No. Because the enemy, <laughs> I mean, you have a target on your back. The enemy is definitely coming. <laughs> he does not want us to pray. That was uh, one of the other ones, uh, the bestseller, uh, the eight qualities of an exceptional black woman. Uh, wow. Ooh, okay. That, that's a good one there. Um, this is more or less uh, like a journal. It's a book and a journal. Mm -hmm. uh, this book is going to be in colleges across um, America. 
-hmm. because we want to leave a legacy to the girls and the women that are coming behind us to encourage them mm -hmm. in different areas of life, you know, that faith walk, life lessons, businesses, family, relationships. It's a book full of wisdom mm -hmm. to, to give to them. You know, you can come up out of whatever you are in, you know, don't give up on yourself. And you said there's eight qualities. So can you tell us two? I know this is kind of, we didn't prep this ahead of time, but can you tell us two or three of those qualities? Cause that's really, that piqued my interest. Seven qualities of a, a successful black woman. So yes. exceptional black woman. So can you yes. tell us two or three of those qualities? Definitely. Um, I had versatile. That was one of the chapters that I wrote on being versatile as women. You know, we are multitaskers. That's the way God created us to be. I could be doing five, seven things at one time. I'm on point. I know what I'm doing. Just moving, moving, moving. Going from one thing to the next. Versatile. Another one is influ influential. All right. We're influential in our homes, in business. And another one is strong. Strong. Yeah. We are strong. Yeah. Yes, we That's are. Good. That's yes. good. That's good. That's really good. Congratulations, because that's quite a, that's quite a um, quite an accomplishment to have have six time bestseller. Yes, behind your name. Yes. So you have a podcast. What's the name of your podcast, and where can we find it? My podcast is called uh, "Stepping Into a New You," and that's also the name of my coaching program, "Stepping Into a New You." You can tune into the podcast um, on the various. Uh, 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 podcasts that they have a uh, podcast on. I usually drop a new episode every Thursday. The podcast is challenging my listeners to make those necessary changes in their lives that they need to make. Stop making excuses. We like to make excuses. Yeah. Instead of stepping out of our comfort zones and, and do the change, be the change. Let's go yeah. for it. You know, you yeah. can become a new you. I mean, yeah. if you're negative, you don't have any hope. All right, we got to change that mindset. Mm -hmm. All right, let's speak those positive affirmations over ourselves and our lives. We shall have what we say. That's right. Out of the, yes, that's right. We have to declare those things not as though they were. I Have you tried cryotherapy before? No, I have not. <laughs> I tried it on Saturday because I've been wanting to try it. I've been reading it a lot of seeing videos about it. And I was like, I'm going to try it because all the benefits of it. And it's negative. It starts out at like negative 200 degrees. And you're in no, you're only in there in your underwear. You have, I mean, you're in there by yourself in this chamber. But it's negative 200. It goes, goes down to like negative 250. And so I, but I did a video about it because all my fears all the consternation I had about it, like, oh my gosh, what's going to do? I'm going to turn into an icicle. I'm going to get frostbitten. None of those things were nearly as nearly what I expected. And that's what I was saying in the video is that most of the time, the fear that we have, the anxiety that we have, the stress that we have about things, it never even comes to pass. If we'll just, like you just said, just jump just take the take the bull by the horns and make the decision. Start the podcast, write the book, confront yeah. the perpetrator, whatever the case may be. Start the new job, move. We'll find yeah. that it's not nearly conquering fear is not nearly as difficult as we think it's going to be. And on the other side, there's always benefits. Yeah. All right, you have your your um your company. <laughs> I think is called Footprint Footprint. Footprint Enterprises. I'm sorry. Tell yes. us how you came up with that name. Footprint Enterprise. It was very weird. <laughs> Actually, I was in the shower one morning and I happened to look down and I saw a footprint. Hmm. So I ran downstairs and I'm, I'm looking up, you know, a footprint. What does this mean? What does this mean? I'm like, oh my God. We all have a psychological footprint mm -hmm. from our past that shapes our future. Mm -hmm. Those things that we have experienced are our footprints. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the name of my uh, children's book series as well, Footprint Series. 
or I'm talking about different things that children go through that they can't even talk about mm -hmm. so that the books can be a voice for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing a word for you. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to deliver it cause I'm hearing it. So I'm going to deliver it to you now. And, and, um, I'm basically, when I, when I said footprint, I began to ask you about it. I thought about the, the, the story about footprints, mm -hmm. how, you know, the, the, the famous poem about footprints, about walking along, the guy walking along and seeing two sets of footprints. Then there was only one. And he's like, Jesus, did you leave me? And he's like, no, at the points where you saw one footprint, those were the times that I carried you. Yeah. And so um, I, I sense that the father is saying to you that now, that the books are only the beginning of the footprint that he is creating in the earth because of you, because of your testimony, because of your story, because of your journey, he is leaving an indelible footprint in the earth through your legacy, one of healing, one of restoration, one of deliverance even. I see mm. you beginning to do deliverance for women and women will come to you and you'll begin to pray over them and you'll anoint them and they'll share their story, you'll share their story. And this is much, much bigger and I know it sounds, I mean, even your resume and the things that you share, you already doing amazing, powerful things for God. But God says that, that the vision and passion that he has behind your journey and what he wants to do with your story is even bigger. It's bigger. I hear media. I mean, you're already involved in media in some capacity, but I hear media. And this is a huge, huge um, footprint that he's going to leave in the earth because of your story so keep going god is behind you he is pleased with you he is has given you already beauty for ashes but he says it's not yeah. over yet he has some so, some surprises that are up and coming for you yeah. and as you walk in obedience and you begin to pour and to invest in his daughters and bring healing and deliverance to, deliverance to them you're going to see even deeper levels of healing in your own story healing in uh, every aspect of who you are and how you even see yourself, because as God moves you into these new seasons of elevation and power, you're going to have to trust him at an even deeper level for what he's calling you to. So God bless you. God bless amen, you. God bless amen, you. amen. 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 Okay. Um, let's see. You're a coach. So you said you do transformation life coach. Tell us a little bit about that. What, what are your coach, as far as your clients, what do they love most about you? What differentiates you from, cause now everyone says they're a coach, right? So what differentiates you from other coaches? What do your clients love most about having you as their coach? My transparency. I'm authentic. You know, I put nothing out there. I put it out there. Um, my first uh, course I had with the ladies, it was like three weeks. We met two nights a week. And they didn't say anything the first two nights. And I let them know, you don't have to tell me what happened to you. You really don't. But I am going to challenge you to find someone in your life that you trust to share your story with. Mm -hmm. And by that third night, they could not wait to tell me their story, their real story. You know, and I sat in awe that night. I'm like, look at God. Look at what God has done. I could see the release. I could see the glow. They got what they came for. They started their healing process. Amen. So, Amen. so they because they were kind of skeptical at first but then as you as they work with you they begin to open up and i think that's that i mean that's huge trust because, you know people have these masks people have these secrets then as you said in the black community particularly there's this whole thing about big mamas saying you know what happens in this house stays in this house and that has literally caused a lot of people to be in um mental hospitals Yes, trying to has. hold that stuff inside, trying yep. to mask it, trying to cover it, trying to pretend, telling yep. lies, living these dualities and double lives, and it's Drug, really powerful alcohol. spiral yep. out of their minds. And so it's huge that you're able to, you know, to get people to confide with you in a at a place where they can share their stories and begin to get the healing that they need. Because as you said in your title, expose it. I mean, it's all about healing. We need to be healed. We are a very traumatized people because yes. of our stories and our journeys and until we allow the holy spirit to come in and begin to really speak to those places of pain we may do some things and we may be somewhat successful 
but the enemy waits for an opportunity to try to come in and use that pain and trauma to attack us and um, jeopardize what we're doing. Yeah. All right, guys, we have about probably about eight to 10 more minutes more that we're going to go. So send your questions. If you have any questions, any comments, encouragement, if you're enjoying the broadcast, if you're enjoying the story, please, please, please put those comments down so I can share those with her because we're going to be rounding up in probably eight to 10 minutes more. So we want you to have the opportunity to ask any questions or give any uh, comments or concerns. Well, not really concerns, but any comments that you have to share with Ivy. So now's the time, about 10 more minutes. I'll check a couple more times and then we're going to be closing out. Okay, um, it's, you said you were international. I saw in the list that you were international speaker. So I wanted to know what other countries you've spoken in besides the United States and what did you see as being the primary difference? Uh, Africa. <laughs> Africa, which country? I do not know the name, I'm sorry. But I did have the opportunity to um, do a TV interview um, in Africa, that was my first interview about my book. Okay. And I was so excited um, about that interview. I have listeners uh, from my podcast um, in Germany and the Philippines. So it's like my voice is going around the world, yeah. literally. There's that footprint. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's man. awesome. That's awesome. I was asking because I know that like the first time that when I went, I went to a mission trip in Africa and I was in Uganda and the first time I spoke to women, that was my first time ever using an interpreter. And mm -hmm. so that was a big because I talk pretty fast. I get excited, especially when I'm talking about God. And so that was one of the biggest challenges for me was to slow down. And, you know, because I have you have to give the only say a little bit at a time so the interpreter yeah. can interpret it for you. And so that was a challenge for me and learning and kind of slowing down and not racing through what I was saying so I could say something and then wait for the interpreter to um, to interpret it for me. Um, let's see. So I had this question. The focus, you said your podcast, you talk, is that is that where you talk about trauma also? Or uh, trauma? Sexual abuse or go ahead. It's, it's different topics. Uh, I talk about, uh, you know, of course I share my story, but I talk about things that challenge my listeners to make those uh, changes in their lives and to stop making excuses. I talk about changing and I've talked about like losing weight, relationships, those family relationships. I talked about the prodigal son or daughter, you know, go back home. Let's go. <laughs> you know, it's time to grow up. Mm -hmm time to grow up yeah that's good okay the last topic i want to uh talk about before i let you pray for the for the listeners and people that will watch on the replay is forgiveness i saved this for last because this is a <laughs> i remember um i remember joyce meyer said that she wrote a book about forgiveness and so um it, when you know she would go and do these speed you know she would travel the country like she does now and she had this huge book table because she's written so many books and she said they would sell out a lot of times of the books, but their book on forgiveness was always there. Like they didn't have to order any extra. It never ran out. People just would not buy that book on forgiveness. And so she said, finally, the publisher was like, we're going to change the title of it. Mm. So rather than call it forgiveness, we're going to call it reduce me to love. Yeah. It's still yeah. It's going to be the same content, but mm. people will be more likely maybe to pick it up if it doesn't say forgiveness. And so I just always thought that was, it's funny, but it's also sad because, I mean, you're holding yourself in bondage when you don't forgive. And so yeah. you talk, you said that there's a whole chapter in your book about forgiveness. So tell us a little bit about that, what that process looks, looks like for you and why you think it's so difficult for people to forgive. Yeah. Um, first of all, we want to forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, we've been so hard on ourselves for something that wasn't even our fault. Yeah. It happened to you. Forgive yourself for not speaking about it for so long, holding it in. Forgive yourself for how you treated yourself. The self-hate, you know, not liking yourself because of what someone else done to you. Start there first. Forgive yourself because it was not your fault. And I want you to know that God loves you. Yes, you. 
And you have to forgive the person who hurt you. Haven't you given them enough of your time, your energy, and your life? That's good. You say, I'm not going to forgive them. But that person is holding you in bondage because you refuse to forgive. Release yourself on today and release them so you can be free. It's difficult because you feel like you're letting them off the hook. You're not letting them off the hook. They know what happened. You know what happened. God knows it happened. God knows all. He sees all. And God's word lets us to know that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't you worry about repaying anyone about anything. And like Adrian just said, reduce me to love. Mm -hmm. It's a heart condition. How is your heart on today? Mm -hmm. Let's get rid of the fear, the anger, the hate, and the unforgiveness. And let's stop holding on to that stuff so that we can walk in freedom God has a purpose for your life. And it cannot be fulfilled until you let it go. So there you have it. What happened to you is holding up the progress of your life. When you release it, I'm telling you, you are going to get such a sense of release in your mind, your soul, your spirit. You may begin to laugh. You may begin to weep. It's okay. God gave us our emotions. And some of us are so hard because we've been hurt so much that we don't trust anyone. And we try to walk around with this facade facade and say, I don't care. Yes, you do. You care. You don't care? Okay. Ask God to soften your heart on today. Ask God to give you the strength to forgive the one. Who has hurt you because freedom feels good i'm telling you it feels good <laughs> amen amen okay so this i'm gonna i almost want to just let you keep going and go ahead and say the prayer now but let's tell how do the people find you do you have a website let me put that in yes the the website is footprint enterprises llc.com If you visit my website, you can go on there and get a free course outline of the course that I offer. You can reach me on Instagram at Footprint Series. Facebook, Ivy Caldwell. YouTube, Ivy Caldwell. And you can follow my podcast, uh, Stepping Into a New You. Oh, and don't forget the TV show. We can't forget that. Okay, your TV show. So when? So where is your TV show house? When can we watch it? And what's it about? All right. So uh, my TV show is called A New You Transformative Ministries. And my show, I do a lot of interviews of people who have been through the most unthinkable, but yet they have a rise and they're using all of that pain for god's glory mm-hmm. i have a good time on my my tv show i'll put the link in uh in the chat there for the tv show it airs on uh monday nights at 7 p.m eastern standard time uh you must have ruku tv or apple fire tv and you download the rethink TV network, or you can just go to the website. If you hit browse, go down about five, and you'll see my show right there, A New You, Transformative Ministries, and you can um, watch all my shows that have already aired. Okay, so if they have Roku or they have, can is it on Fire Stick too? Uh, what did I say? Fire TV. Okay. Apple Fire so- TV. So they, if they have that app, the Fire Stick or Roku TV, they would just type in Transformative Ministries? They would type in Rethink TV. 
Okay. And then, then they will get to my show. Okay. That's so the name of the network, Rethink okay. TV. Okay, perfect. And the name of your show, one more time? A New You Transformative Ministries. All right. I'm putting all this in here. So that footprint will be here forever. <laughs> on social media attached to this live okay i don't see any questions but i think that I, maybe i've asked all the questions or maybe people are kind of like me just sitting here after listening to your story like wow what a powerful story what a powerful testimony what a powerful um ministry and anointing that god has given you for trauma and helping people heal and it's much much needed because there is a lot of people who've been traumatized victimized molested, raped, and all those types of things, and they need healing. So it's, it's a huge, huge blessing. I'm going to let you, um, we have your information here. People have your website. They have a way to contact you, reach out to you. Again, the television show is Rethink TV. That's the app on Roku and uh, Fire, Fire TV. And then you go into her show name, A New You Transformative Ministries. Now, when is the show air? Monday nights at 7 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. Okay. All right. So we're going to let you just pray, uh, pray a prayer for whatever uh, the spirit is leading you. It can be forgiveness. It can be for trauma, whatever the spirit is leading you lead, whatever direction he's leading you feel free. We're going to have you pray for a couple of minutes and then um, I will give some closing remarks and then we'll close out. So just a couple more minutes, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, set your notifications. You have all Ivy's information here where you're able to uh, get in contact with her and utilize the resources, the powerful, powerful resources that she has available to you. Okay, go ahead. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you and we give you glory on today for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for those that are tuning in. We thank you for the souls, oh God, that are tuning in to this episode, oh God. You know who they are, Father, and you know what they need. Father, we know that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Father, I pray for release on today, oh God. I pray for release of years of bondage, oh God, in Jesus' name, Father. Father, I pray for restoration, oh God. Father, I pray that you will return back to them, oh God, the years that the canker worm have eaten. Father, I pray that you would return back to them their joy, oh God. Return back to them, oh God, the joy, the joy of their salvation, oh God. Father, I thank you for deliverance on today, oh God. From the foul spirit, oh God, in Jesus' name I pray. Father, you know how they feel right now, Father. Father, I pray that your spirit will come up on them, oh God, as they begin to open up their mouths, Father, and release it, Father. Release it to you, oh God. As they cry out to you, oh God, I pray that each word that goes out of their mouth, oh God, that their that their soul is being strengthened and renewed in you, oh God, and that they will have renewed strength, oh God. A new power and authority shall come forth through their mouth, oh God. We thank you, God, for liberation on today. We thank you for healing and freedom. We thank you for wholeness, oh God. We thank you, God, for mending together all of those broken fragments in the mind, in their souls, oh God. We thank you, Father, for your healing virtue flowing in their lives, Father. We thank you for covering them, Father, covering their minds, oh God. We thank you, Father, for what you're getting ready to do in their lives and the testimonies that shall come forth because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word, the power of our testimony. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God bless you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Please, please, please share this with people that you know in your life that are going through trauma, that are going through pain, past hurt, 
They can benefit from Elder Ivy's story. They can benefit from her book, expose it. We want to shine light into the darkness. So make sure you share this broadcast with other people that you know could be benefited by it. Again, this is my text number, 770-746-8453. Send me a text if you want to come on and discuss your story of overcoming or if you want to just talk about a current event, talk about the Bible, something that pertains to helping people build, build in business and life, I'd be happy to have you come on and share your story. God bless you for watching. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Bye-bye. Mm, Bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome.